All right, buddy. So, episode 10 of Bleach right here, man. So, basically, let's get into it, man. So, let's start off, obviously, with where we left off last, last episode. With Zaraki and Unahana. And, you get a lot of interesting things revealed throughout this battle. Even though this battle, I'm not going to lie, I did expect it to be more, more higher animation in it. The reason... I don't. I might get hate for this, but there really wasn't nothing special animation wise. Well, I really nothing special animation wise. But we did get some very key moments in this battle. It's like story wise, written wise, that will play out eventually throughout the arc, which is very nice right here, man. So let's get into it. So right here. So right here. Um, obviously we get the flashback with Unahana and Zaraki. We get the flashback of um. She is in the past. She's just standing there. All these bodies are there. And she's like, she tells one of the lower Shinigami, she, she's like, whose bodies are there? And then he gets shocked. Out of nowhere, Zaraki's on the top. That boy, finna, he just comes down and swings at her. And that's where we get, basically throughout this battle right here, we keep, cu we keep cutting between the past and the present, which is kind of the same as Yamamoto versus... The fake um Yuha Bok, which was Roy Lloyd. And right here, so basically we get so I'm gonna go everywhere right here with this shit. I'm not going in order right here. But basically Unahana tells us right here that Zodaki all this time has been consciously suppressing himself. Like consciously suppressing himself. Like this is different right here. This is very different right here. Because as we've seen in OG Bleach, the original Bleach, when it was running back in the past, we find out he he, he suppresses himself, but through a phys in a physical way, by wearing the the bells on his hair, by wearing the 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 eye patch that's that is sucking his spiritual energy, that's physical. But this right here, is, this is a different ballpark right here, man. We find out right here through Onohana that he himself consciously has been suppressing himself since the day that he fought Unohana on the moment he, he was so powerful he was beating Unohana as a child so from right there right at that moment he decided to suppress himself without him even own because he wanted to keep fighting her like forever basically that's crazy right there it's crazy he's suppressing he suppressed himself since the day he met Unohana, since he was a child. Since he was a child, he beat the first... He technically beat the first Kenpachi, Unohana, as a child. That's wild, man. That is wild. That is crazy, man. That is very crazy. And then right here, obviously, we obviously, we obviously see Unohana's Bankai. That shit. I ain't finna lie right there, bro. That shit was very clean animated right there. Very nice art. The way, the voice acting with Kipachi and Unohana was top tier right here, man. Unohana saying Bankai, Minazuki, that shit was terrifying, man. Like, it was so good, man. It was really good. It was really good right here, man. That was so good right there. Alright, yeah, and basically, so basically, Oh, and this is another right here. Amazing. Like, rhythm-wise right here is amazing rhythm-wise when Kubo did this. So, basically, she explains to herself as well. She's like, she says, um, Zaraki, you might, the way you fight forever is by suppressing yourself. But the way I fight forever to enjoy battles is by learning how to heal myself. So, Zaraki does it by... Suppressing himself because he's so strong that he would not be able to enjoy the battle. But with Unohana, she does it by healing herself so she won't die. So she could enjoy the battle forever. You see? It's very awesome right there, man. That's clean right there. So they're both, in a way... Well, she's not suppressing herself. She's healing herself. But Zaraki is so strong, he has to suppress himself to enjoy the battles, basically. That's crazy right there, man. More shit getting set up. Eventually for the for the upcoming for the upcoming seasons right here, man. 
And then basically, yeah. So basically, she dies. Yeah, she's dead, basically. She's dead now. She she throws on the name of the Kenpachi to him. With the, with her sword going to Kenpachi, obviously. And then that's right there when we get a voice of saying, Zaraki, can you hear me? It's me. And then he looks back, and there's a sword standing, like, just straight. No one put it there. But it's obviously there, man. And that's obviously right there. I mean, I'm assuming it's pretty obvious if you cannot tell what that is. It's his true Zanpakuto right there, man. His true sword right there. And that's very exciting for a lot of y'all. When y'all see what's going to happen with him in the preview, in the upcoming, in the upcoming seasons of this Dazzling Blood War, man. All right, but that's it for this, for the, for the Unohana and Kenpachi shit. Let's get on to the, to that boy. What was his name? The, the Zero dude motherfucker. The Zero squad motherfucker. I forgot his name. That dude, all right, but this is massive. The dude that created this impacto. Inet, Inetsu? Oh, no, it's something like that, man. That's him right there. So now they're they're at where where they meet the man that created the ever first Zanpakuto. He's the one that created the Zanpakuto for everybody. He's the reason why everybody has a sword. He's the reason that that's because of him. So basically, so basically, Renji and um, Ichigo and Kona are there, and then they go they go to the real shed to the real. To the real where the shit goes like goes down and basically they fall into the pit and he's basically explaining he's explaining how how each is a bacto starts off as a asachi and uh it shows an example in the episode as well an asachi is just a sword it's a regular sword that each shinigami as the beginning level starts with but as time goes on they train with it they their soul gets embedded into the sword which eventually turns it into their own sword, basically. And that's where, that's why different, that's why they're, each Zanpakuto is different. That's why Renji's Zanpakuto is different, Byakuya's, everybody's is different, because their soul is embedded into the Sachi. So when the Sachi is embedded with their soul, that's when their Zanpakuto is created. That's, yeah, I hope y'all are, y'all could tell, y'all could, uh, y'all could comprehend that shit. It's very easy. <laughs> but basically, yeah. So, yeah. That's an Asachi. It's a base Sampacto, basically. And it's up to them to turn it into a real sword. And that's amazing news right there, man. It's amazing. Like, this episode really did drop a lot of, like, oh, shit, okay. Okay, yeah. And not, this episode is setting up for the future of the Thousand Year Blow War, basically, as well. And then at the end, we get more more shit at the end basically after the ending song and it's of it's them they've been doing it for 71 hours basically for three days and inetsu or noitsu whatever his name is he basically tells renji you pass congratulations but ichigo you failed so you're, you're going home now you're going home and basically this is i'm not sure if they're gonna get the whole the whole shit next episode i don't know how they are though that's where i'm confused like i think next week nah nah oh never mind i think nah it, it i thought it was only one more episode there's two more episodes left i'm i'm pretty sure there are so two episodes that should be enough 40 45 minutes it should be enough man and if the last episode is a little bit longer then they should cover it all but the next two episodes should be amazing man this right here, it's called Nothing But The Rain. Amazing. I'm not finna spoil what the premises is, what it is. But this right here is top tier story writing right here, man. It's amazing. Amazing writing we're about to see in these two episodes. Nothing. If, if, only if these two episodes are about that. Which I believe they are. Nothing But The Rain. Amazing right there, man. And we get to see Ichigo standing in front of Kurosaki's clinic, which is obviously his house. And that where it starts off. I'm, I'm pretty sure they even said it 
and episode 10 or 11, nothing but the rain. So we're already setting up for that. And it's going to be amazing, man. Amazing. Amazing right here, dude. But anyways, guys, I'll see y'all next week. Well, I'll see y'all tomorrow for Chainsaw Man, but see y'all, gaming. Take care.